I came here, I invited myself here, um, mainly because I had read that the creationists were going to hold seven or eight meetings this week talking about Darwin, and all the speakers would be people who believed that Darwin's theory was fatally flawed. So I came to do two things. One is to counter that, because I think at least somebody should be saying that Darwin's theory is not fatally flawed. And after that, quite separately, I want to say that I think Darwin got one thing wrong, and we'll come on to that later. If you've heard anything at all about Darwin, you know he was a very nice guy. And when Stephen Jay Gould tried to describe his character, he said, I can find one flaw in his character. This man was kind to a fault. <laughs> and he delayed publishing his theory for decades, because partly because of that. Because he hated the thought of upsetting anybody. He didn't want to go to war against the Church of England. Most of his best friends were Christians. And his dear wife, Emma, was a devoted and pious Unitarian who once wrote him a long letter explaining how it agonized her to think that she would die and go to heaven and Charles would die and go down there and she would have to spend eternity without him. And he read this book, read this letter, and he wept over it. But he couldn't lie to her and say, OK, I'm converted, I'll see you in heaven. All he could do was write a loving message on it for her to find after he was dead. He knew that when his book came out, there would be one hell of a row. And it happened just as he feared. When it came out, he was reviled from the pulpits. He was denounced from the universities. He was lampooned on the music hall stage. He was caricatured by the cartoonists in the press. And he was given a very bad time. But the strange thing is that as the years passed, all that seemed to evaporate. For some Christians, it evaporated straight away. Um, here's a quotation from the Reverend Charles Kingsley, who wrote uh, The Water Babies book for children. He said, it is just as noble a conception of deity to believe that he created primal forms capable of development as to believe that he required a fresh act of intervention to supply the lacuna which he himself had made. And Darwin was so pleased with that that he included it in the second edition of The Origin of Species. So there were some people who just thought, well, there's no reason why we couldn't accept this. There were also people higher up in the church who remembered that, after all, the church had been through this kind of thing before, when they arrested Galileo and burned Giordano Bruno at the stake for saying that the world went around the sun. And yet, by now, everybody accepts that the world goes around the sun. Nobody thinks this is a threat to religion. And they began to hope that perhaps the same thing would happen with Darwin. So that by the time he died, all the emotiveness had gone out of it. And he had been forgiven, and the church said we will bury him with all due pomp and ceremony next to, um, next to Newton, Isaac Newton, in Westminster Abbey. And furthermore, since he has died in subsequent centuries, more and more of the mainstream Christians have come over, and John Paul II made a statement saying, Yes, this is an established fact. In five, we can live with it perfectly well. <coughs> and all this was like a story with a happy ending. There had been storm and drang, and now there was peace. But since 2000, all this 
has gone for a burden. It's boiling up again, and people are calling each other evil and dangerous and pernicious and vicious. And I'll give you a couple of quotations. <clears throat> Here's um, Richard Dawkins. Evolution has become a battlefield on which the forces of enlightenment confront the dark powers of ignorance and repression. And here's one from Ian Paisley. <laughs> it is not a skirmish between science and non-believers. It is a war waged by the enemy himself against his very creator. So you get all these people uh, slandering each other and using bad language to each other. And David Attenborough had been receiving threats and hate mail because he dared to put on a program commending Darwin's idea. So another thing they tend to say is, what you believe leads to a great deal of wickedness. Here's a man called Brian Ed Edwards. If you realize what Darwin gave rise to, you would realize what a pernicious system it is. Because after Darwin's death, some of his followers, like Gordon, started commending um, eugenics so that they said people who are handicapped or defective ought to be sterilized or got rid of. But this was not a very good move because if you start asking what does belief in God lead to, you can come back with, well, what about the Spanish Inquisition? And what about all those hundreds of years when Catholics and Protestants were burning each other alive at the stake in the name of the Prince of Peace? So you may be asking where I stand. Well, I stand roughly where Darwin stood in the second half of his life. I don't believe in God. I do believe in evolution. But a lot of my best friends are Christians. I would not dream of trying to talk them out of it. And they don't try to talk me into it. <clears throat> and so what I want to say about this row is, can't we cool it? We used to have a position where there was a definite demarcation line. That side was a theologist, this side was a scientist. They didn't interfere with one another. They didn't badmouth each other. You could have a university with a department of theology and a department of science, and they lived at peace together. And I'm very sorry to think that this row is obliterating that demarcation line, because that's where the danger comes in. So I came to ask, where is it coming from? Why suddenly, since about 2000? I think there's no doubt that it began in the United States, because a much higher proportion of Christians in the United States are evangelicals who believe in the literal truth of Genesis and that he was made out of Adam's rib and there was a snake and there was a, a flood and Noah's Ark and all the rest of it. You will all remember <coughs> the Scopes trial in 1925 where a, a schoolmaster was fired because he taught evolution. You remember it if only because there was a film with Gregory Peck in. Um, but when that case was fought up to the Supreme Court, the man had to be reinstated because they said it is part of the written constitution of the United States that the authorities must not favor any one brand of religion against any of the others. It was very wise because America was founded by people who had left Europe because they'd been religiously persecuted in their own country and they didn't want to start, start again in America. 